Rangers lead the way, gentlemen. Your boy here, Ranger, Danger Ranger, a.k.a. Zach. A got the formation, order, movement, movement, principles, and principles of patrolling class today. Again, this is going to be mostly a top-level overview. We're not going to dive super in-depth on a lot of these. The principles of patrolling is going to be pretty brief, but uh, we will dive somewhat deep into formations and then movement techniques today. I'm going to throw in a zen here. In true, uh, you know, ranger fashion, some kind of nicotine to teach this class. All right, so you've got, as far as like, but we're talking about uh, patrolling formations here. Um, and you've got four primary formations. you got wedge, file, line, and staggered column. So your mission, situation, and terrain are going to dictate exactly which formation to use and exactly how, how spread out you're going to be in these formations. So the cool thing about these is that they apply from a, a, a level as small as a team and all the way up realistically to battalion size maneuvers. Um, granted, that doesn't happen nearly as often and in the regiment. You won't, I don't, I've never did any kind of battalion level event that besides like MLAT and stuff, which is a, a little different. Um, we did do a few company movements, in which case we were in a, <laughs> I think company company file platoon wedge kind of formation. I don't know the exact, how you'd exactly specify the, the formation we were in, but we were in wedges, you know, squad wedges, squad column, fire team wedge in a platoon, um, platoon formation. And then we were just in a, uh, I guess, company file at that point with, you know, three platoons in a row. So most commonly though, you'll be in a squad or a platoon formation outside of events like team live fire. And then in Ranger School, you're going to be in a uh, squad column fire team wedge and in a platoon formation. So these are your three basic formations you're going to be using. So you have a wedge here with uh, one side generally being longer. Sometimes in Ranger School, you'll have like six dudes on a, on a team. So it's going to extend, you know, a little bit further. Um, team leader in front, saw gunner, grenadier, rifleman, or saw gunner on the right on the weak side because he's got a uh, most casually producing weapon and he kind of compensates for the lack of another dude on this, on the, uh, on the weak side, you've got your line column or uh, column or file. And then you have staggered column. All right. So wedge most commonly used, and this allows the best dispersion of fires. And what I mean by that is you're spreading out your, your automatic rifleman, saw gunner and grenadier and rifleman, and this allows, you know, these three, honestly, all four of them to be able to, to shoot to their front if need be, if, they, if you take contact from the front. So most control, the team leader is able to, uh, to control his team and see them all at one time and uh, average speed. So it's going to expand and contract depending on the terrain. So what I mean by that is like if you're walking through an open field, you're generally going to be you know, maybe a little bit further than 20, 10 meters. You're going to be way further than 10 meters apart. You're going to be, you know, 15 to 25 meters apart. If it's a, if it's a large open danger area for whatever reason you're going across. And then if it's like a sparsely wooded area, you're going to spread out a little bit more. And then as the vegetation increases, you're going to get closer together. So the saw gunner generally is placed on the side where contact is most likely going to be coming from. So if you're hand railing a road, or if you're going around an open danger area, the saw gunner is going to be on that side. And it's, you know, the discretion of the team leader to where he's going to be. The team leader has the, the control over the saw. It's his most important casually producing weapon, which we're going to learn about next week with machine guns. So he wants to have that guy in his hip pocket. So all the team members keep a visual on their TL and they're able to because of, uh, because of how spread it is. So file. Average control, most speed, um, least dispersion of fires. Again, if they took contact from the front, they're going to have to peel off to the right and left to be able to engage, and uh, it's going to take a few seconds. So you don't really use this that often. I take that back. You do in Ranger School because you do walk through some some, some thick stuff all the time. But used in low-light conditions, so at night you will use this a decent amount just because it's hard to keep control of a... A wedge when you are asleep on your feet. Um, 
10 meters between each man, and then each sequential team member takes a di different direction for security. So team leader will obviously have point frontal. Your automatic rifleman will be generally off to whatever side he's going to be scanning off as he walks to whatever side it, contact is most imminent from. And then grenadier will be whatever side the automatic rifleman doesn't cover, and then your rifleman will be opposite of the grenadier. So line, you're not going to use this one very often. Very strong frontal security, minimal flank security, pretty slow. And you're only going to use this when assaulting an objective or you're in contact already and you were in a, uh, either a wedge or a line column and you, you peel out to be online with your team leader. Again, that, that saw gunner, he knows that his job is to stay like as close as he can with this team leader. That's, that's his dude. And that team leader is making sure that he has that uh, that sucker in his hip pocket. Staggered column, two files on opposite sides of road or danger area. Alternate team members to maximize dispersion of fires. Forgot to put that in there. And then you're going to be 20 meters from your man directly to your front. And then 15 meters from the man on your diagonal. So 15 meters here and then 20 meters here. Typically, you're going to be using this, like I said here, on a road or a uh, you know, a linear kind of danger area for walking along it. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a road. It can be like a, like power line kind of area where you're, where there's clearing or a clearing. And yeah, so you'll use this. Sometimes you'll use it in, uh, in place of a file, like going through the woods. But again, it's a little harder to, uh, to keep this spacing here. Spacing is the most important thing when you're, when you're talking about formations, you don't want to be too close to where, you know, you can, get hit with a machine gun pretty easily where that machine gun can uh, traverse and hit multiple dudes very easily. But you also don't want to get too far apart to where you lose contact and you get lost in the brush. And that happens all the time at night with inexperienced dudes in a night vision. All right. So we're going to go into squad formations. They're identical to what we just talked about. Um, the placement of different people is going to be a little different just because you've got more dudes. So basically in the mirror team formations, the squad leader is going to place himself where he has maximum control of the two squad of the two teams. So wherever he sees fit, typically he's going to be in between where he can see the team leader in front and his team leader to the rear. And they're going to, there's going to be 20 meters between teams and Ranger school. When you have a gun team attached, that gun team is going to be in the center with the squad leader. And they're going to be wedged off of that squad leader, essentially. All right. So squad column fire team wedge. This is the bread and butter of regiment, you know, moving, as well as you know any infantry unit. So you've got your lead fire team or alpha team with your team leader up front, saw gunner, grenadier, rifleman, squad leader in the middle. He's got eyes on the lead team leader. He's watching him and he's this team leader behind him has got eyes on the squad leader. And then there's 20 meters in between the last man of alpha team and the first man of Bravo team. And then if you have a gun team attached, generally they're gonna be either integrated and they're going to be kind of wedged off of the squad leader, or they're going to be their own little like three man wedge, you know, kind of trailing behind the squad leader here. Cause that squad leader is going to be moving around. He might be, he might be coming up to the lead team leader to, to make sure he's on course. If he notices there's a, they're going the wrong way or something and that squad leader's paying, paying attention. He, he might run up to the lead team leader in that, in that case, the, uh, that gun team's just going to stay put in between the two teams. Again, when you have a gun team attached, the squad leader is responsible for emplacement of that machine gun. So that's why they hang out with him. And they're not like integrated into uh, like the lead fire team, for example, because um, when we talk about battle drill one alpha with a gun team attached, you don't want to immediately have them in front. You want this team to gain some kind of fire superiority and then give the uh, gun team time to maneuver in place to supplement that lead team as a base of fire. So squad file again, the only time you're going to use this is at night or moving through really thick stuff. Ideally, you don't use this that often. Lead team leader, um, ignore this part. I couldn't find a very good graphic for this. So lead team leader, automatic rifleman, grenadier rifleman, squad leader, and then your uh, gun team would be behind him. And then your trail team, team leader, automatic rifleman, grenadier, and your rear team leader. These are, uh, I don't know exactly what this graphic is trying to depict, but there's only going to be two team leaders and one squad leader. So the reason in this graphic, uh, take it back, disregard. Squad line, 
Again, you're not going to use this very often. If you were uh, setting up a base of fire in a platoon formation and uh, that lead squad gets into contact, this is generally how they're going to get online. Squad leader in the middle, again, he's, he's placed to be able to control and communicate to both team leaders. Squad staggered calm. We've got uh, a few extra dudes in here, so ignore the PL position and the extra squad leaders. This is kind of a messy graphic. I'm sorry for putting this in here. Should have created my own, and I was lazy. But team leader, again, 20 meters across, 15 meters, rather, on the diagonal. Um, if the road's wider than that, that's okay. And then 20 meters between men. So movement techniques. This is uh, you're going to need to know for school as well. So they're chosen based on the likelihood of enemy contact and relative need for speed, baby. Ranger school, you're in, this is one of your grading uh can be one of your grading criteria or your our eyes are going to look for, especially in mountains in Florida. We use it, but it's rare that you do it right. So if you do it right, um, when we talk about traveling overwatch, so these aren't fixed and they're not formations. There are, there are ways that you use your formations within this. So it's going to depend on the situation. Again, if you're doing a movement to contact, you're going to be probably using traveling overwatch. We're going to talk about that here in a second. So, the, the key thing, though, is that individuals must always be able to see their team leader and the platoon leader must have eyes on his lead squad leader. So you're going to control with hand and arm signals and radi radios. You've got traveling, traveling overwatch, and bounding overwatch. So traveling. Use when contact is unlikely and you guys are, you know, moving through an area where there's not supposed to be any enemy. Maximum speed. Uh, more control than traveling overwatch, less than bounding over overwatch. Minimum dispersion security, 10 meters between men, 20 meters between squads and teams. So that's just your, uh, you're going to be just, you know, in your squad column, fire team wedge, and you guys are moving out. So traveling overwatch, used when enemy contact is possible. Most often used. Um, 20 meters between men, 50 meters between teams. So you're a little bit more spread out. And this only applies to the lead squad in the majority of cases. So that lead squad needs to be far enough ahead of the rest of the platoon to detect any kind of uh, enemy and engage them before the enemy observes and realizes that there's a whole platoon following along with this squad. So they're going to be a little bit further out in this uh, platoon column, which is essentially just squad column fire team wedges, you know, in a line. We're going to talk about platoon uh, level formations in a later video, so that'll make a little bit more sense here. But you're going to want to stay between 50 and 100 meters in front of that platoon, depending on the terrain, light, and weather. So if it's dark, you're not going to be more than 50 meters out. If it's you know light and you guys are moving through uh, kind of more open areas, you're going to be up to 100 meters in front of that platoon. Medium security, medium speed, medium control. It's just the, the best of all of them. So bounding overwatch is used when enemy contact is likely or when crossing a danger area. Bounding element moves while the other element occupies a position where it can overwatch the bounding element's route. Bounding element must stay within small arms range of the overwatch element. Um, and we're going to get into that. So we have squad bounding overwatch. So they're going to leave about 20 meters between them. Distance between the teams are going to vary. One team is going to provide overwatch while the other team maneuvers. Squad leader, any headquarters packs and attached guns are going to stay with the initial overwatch element. Um, you might also hear them referred to as the base of fire. If you're not in contact, they're not a base of fire. So platoon bounding overwatch, you're going to have one squad bounding, one squad on overwatch, and then the third is going to be held in reserve generally behind that, uh, that overwatch element. PLs and FOs are going to stay with the overwatching squad because their PL needs to have control, and then that FO is going to stay with him in case he needs to call for fire. The machine gun element is going to stay with the overwatch element. You can have one team maneuver with a bounding element. Generally, in a platoon, you're going to have three gun teams, so you're going to have two of those gun teams with your overwatch element, and then another one can be maneuvering with that bounding element to uh, set up the next overwatch position once they get there. Now we're going to talk about bounding. So this applies also when you're doing a initiating uh, Battle Drill 1 Alpha or Battle Drill 1 Platoon React to Contact and Squad React to Contact or Squad Attack, as I was. <laughs> platoon Attack and Squad Attack. 
So you have successive where one element moves into a position and then the overwatch moves to a position generally online with that first element. You have alternating bounds with one element moving into position. Supporting element will then move to a position in front of the first element. Not directly in front, obviously, because they still need to be able to uh, supplement and provide them with covering fire. And I'm going to show you kind of what that looks like here. So successive bounds. You've got your, your, your whole formation here. This is your uh, alpha team. Bounds up to here. Sets up a base of fire. The Bravo team is going to maneuver over to here online with alpha team. And then once they're set, you have alpha team moving up in their third bound and then setting up their base of fire. And then your Bravo team will then move to this position in line. All right, alternating bounds. You've got your entire element here, your maneuver element, rather your overwatch element makes their first move. Second element will do their second move and they're gonna move into a position past the first element. And then that first element will then move here. So you're making a little bit further, uh, further bounds. Again, this applies talking about the platoon. So this would be one squad with gun teams and PL, and then your second squad is going to maneuver past them. Principles patrolling, plan assistance, reconnaissance, security, control, and common sense. So you're graded on these in Ranger School. Don't violate any of them. Always have security, you know, have control, and uh, use common sense, and use reconnaissance, and obviously planning, all of them. You're graded on all of these if you, uh, you know, leave security or if you uh, don't have security at any point in the operation you'll get dinged you'll get graded on negatively on that if you do something really stupid and don't follow your uh don't follow your plan or adapt your plan to where you lose any of this or you're gonna get dinged and graded negatively so planning quickly make a plan a simple plan and effectively communicate it to the lowest level a perfect plan that takes forever to complete and is poorly disseminated is not a good plan. And then rehearsals are an important part of this. So generally in Reg Ranger Regiment, everyone gets the con-op, everyone gets the mission brief um, all in one go. So those team leaders and squad leaders don't have to go back and like re-explain the plan. It's coming directly from the, uh, the ground force commander, the PL, and uh, your squad leaders that are briefing the plan who have created it. And everyone knows what they're going to be doing basically is is the intent of the planning phase is down to the lowest man he knows exactly what phase of the operation he's going to need to pay attention to and what kind of the order of how things are going to go out on the mission and then those teams like if there's special teams such as ladder teams or you know aid and litter teams um epw teams demolition teams they're briefed exactly at one point they need to be uh, utilized in the mission. Reconnaissance. So as a leader, it's your responsibility to confirm what you think you know and learn what you don't already know. So there's a, there's a few different ways to do reconnaissance. So you got map recon, area recon, recon patrol, and then leaders recon prior to actions on. And we'll talk more about like leaders recon and uh, and whatnot later on in this series. Security. Preserve your force. Maintain 360 degrees security at all points in the operation. And then don't maneuver unless you have an overwatch or covering element. Control. Clarify the concept of the operation. Commander's intent. Utilize discipline communications in order to overwhelm the enemy at the decisive point. So you're going to utilize direct fire control measures and then have and utilize your comms pace plan. So direct fire control measures we're going to talk about in its own video, but essentially having shift and lift signals is the biggest one um, for your support by fire and your maneuver element. Common sense. Use all of the available information and good judgment to make sound and timely decisions. It's difficult to teach, but it's the most important thing to have as a leader, and you kind of pick this up as you go once you get out there and see this stuff in the real world bonus principle don't get your feet wet so if you can avoid you know crossing a river crossing a stream you do so <laughs> this was a uh, relatively short video here this was just a, a brief overview of all of what we just covered the key things to take away from this is the uh the formations really 
that's going to be your bread and butter. And the re- one of the reasons why Regiment's so good at this stuff is because we are experts and masters at using this. There's been times where uh, we've talked to people in the jock and they're like, yeah, we know when Rangers out on patrol because you guys always are in a movement formation that's textbook. Like we're in perfect squad, squad column fire team wedges. Our spacing's great and uh, we don't bunch up. Let me know down below if you need me to clarify any of this. I know this was a uh, kind of just short video, but if you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll answer them to the best of my abilities or refer you to where I can find or you can find the answers yourself. That's it. Take care.